In Romans 15, Paul emphasizes the importance of the strong in faith supporting and bearing with the weak. He encourages believers to prioritize the well-being of their neighbors over their own desires, mirroring the selflessness of Christ. Paul's message underscores the significance of unity in the Christian community. By fostering this unity and mutual support, believers can collectively glorify God. Paul's teachings here serve as a reminder of the broader Christian mission, to live in harmony and promote the spiritual growth of the community, following Christ's example of self-sacrifice and love. Also in Romans 15, 1 2, Paul accentuates the responsibility of the strong in faith towards the weak. He begins by associating himself with the strong, thereby validating their understanding of Christian freedom. Paul's exhortation is that the strong should bear with the failings of the weak, rather than seeking their own pleasure. The phrase, to bear with the failings, can be interpreted in two ways, either as bearing a burden or as mere tolerance. In the given context, where the focus is on the strong not pleasing themselves, but aiming to please their neighbours, the idea of bearing a burden in the sense of offering help and support seems more fitting than just tolerating the weak. This sentiment aligns with Galatians 6, 2, where believers are encouraged to carry each other's burdens as a way to fulfil Christ's law. Moreover, Paul addresses the responsibilities of the strong towards the weak in the context of dietary practices. The strong are those who feel free to eat anything, while the weak have certain dietary restrictions or scruples. Paul affirms that the strong should not merely act to please themselves, especially when dining with the weak. Instead, they should be considerate and avoid causing distress to the weak by respecting their dietary concerns. This teaching is notable because it goes against the prevailing Greco-Roman cultural norm. Typically in that culture, the weak were expected to conform to the preferences of the strong. By urging the strong to accommodate the weak, Paul introduces a countercultural perspective, asserting mutual respect and consideration over personal freedom. Furthermore, Paul highlights the importance of considering the well-being of our neighbours, particularly fellow believers who may have weaker faith. He underscores the idea that our actions should be geared towards their benefit, ensuring that they are built up in their faith. This means being considerate and loving, ensuring that we don't become stumbling blocks that might lead them to act against their conscience. For instance, in the context of eating certain foods, it's essential to allow the weak to act according to their conscience. Paul's message is not about pleasing others to make them happy superficially, but genuinely acting in ways that promote their spiritual growth and well-being. In addition, in Romans 15, 3, 4, Paul indicates the selflessness of Christ as a model for believers. He underscores that Christ did not live to please himself. While it's uncertain if Paul was aware of the synoptic account where Jesus states his purpose to serve and give his life as a ransom, Mark 10:45. Paul was undoubtedly familiar with the essence of Christ's self-sacrificial love. This understanding is evident in various Pauline writings. In 2 Corinthians 8, 9, Paul speaks of Christ's grace, highlighting how Jesus, despite his divine richness, chose poverty so believers could be spiritually enriched. Galatians 2.20 offers a personal reflection, where Paul acknowledges the life he now lives is rooted in the faith of the Son of God, who loved and sacrificed himself for humanity. Perhaps the most profound depiction of Christ's selflessness is in Philippians 2, 6, 8. Here, Paul describes Jesus, who, despite his divine nature, didn't exploit his godliness. Instead, he humbled himself, taking on human form, and endured the ultimate sacrifice of death on the cross. This act of Christ not pleasing himself is a significant understatement, given the magnitude of his sacrifice. Further, Paul references Christ's selflessness by citing a passage from Psalm 69.9, which says, The insults of those who insult you have fallen on me. This quotation is directly taken from the LXX version of Psalm 68.10. The terms insult in this context imply criticism and shaming. 
The original context of this quote is the psalmist's expression of distress due to the ridicule he faces because of his fervour for God. The psalmist describes enduring scorn for God's sake, feeling alienated from his own family and being consumed by zeal for God's house. The emphasis is on the psalmist's willingness to bear shame and insult because of his dedication to God, paralleling Christ's sacrifice and dedication. Besides, Cruz maintains the connection between a quotation from the Old Testament and Paul's message about Christ's selflessness. The psalmist's experience of enduring suffering due to his dedication to God and his fervour for God's house mirrors Christ's own suffering. Christ bore the weight of insults directed at God, which ultimately led to his crucifixion. This was not just for God's sake, but also for humanity's salvation. Drawing from this, Paul suggests that the strong believers in the Roman Christian community should emulate Christ. Instead of solely seeking their own pleasure, they should prioritise the needs of the weak by willingly restricting their freedoms. This act of selflessness is a reflection of Christ's own sacrifice and love. Additionally, Paul references a psalm and then elaborates on the significance of Old Testament, OT, scriptures. He asserts that the scriptures from the past were penned with the purpose of instructing us. The use of the term for at the beginning of Paul's statement serves to justify his citation of Psalm 69 and also offers insight into his broader perspective on the OT. This viewpoint is not unique to this passage. Paul echoes similar sentiments in other parts of his writings. For instance, in Romans 4, 24 he points out that the declaration it was credited to him was not solely for Abraham's sake, but also for ours, especially for those who believe in the resurrection of Jesus. In 1 Corinthians 10.11, Paul notes that past events recorded in the scriptures serve as examples and warnings for the present generation, especially as they live in a pivotal era. Moreover, in 2 Timothy 3.16.17, Paul underscores the divine inspiration behind all scriptures, highlighting their utility in teaching, correction and training in righteousness. This ensures that believers are well prepared and equipped for every virtuous act. Through these references, Paul consistently underscores the enduring relevance and instructional value of the OT for believers. Furthermore, Paul reiterates the significance of scriptures, not just for the sake of instruction, but for the deeper purpose they serve in our lives. He underscores that the scriptures were written for our guidance, aiming to instill in us endurance and offer encouragement, ultimately leading us to hope. Paul sees a profound relationship between endurance and hope. This connection is not unique to Romans 15. Paul touches upon it in other parts of his writings. For instance, in Romans 5, 3, 4, he indirectly links suffering, perseverance, character and hope – suggesting a progression where suffering leads to perseverance, which in turn builds character, culminating in hope. In another instance, in 1 Thessalonians 1, 3, Paul commends the Thessalonians for their endurance inspired by hope. However, this is a reversal of the idea presented in Romans 15, 4, where endurance is the pathway to hope. In essence, Paul is highlighting the transformative power of scriptures in fostering endurance and hope in believers. In addition, Paul repeats the significance of scriptures in providing encouragement and hope to believers. This chapter uniquely highlights that it's through the scriptures that believers find hope. While Paul has mentioned encouragement and hope together in other contexts, such as in 2 Thessalonians 2:16-17, Romans 15 stands out in its emphasis on the role of scriptures. In 2 Thessalonians, Paul speaks of the Lord Jesus Christ and God our Father providing eternal encouragement and hope. The underlying message is that God's grace is the ultimate source of encouragement leading to hope. However, in Romans 15, 4, Paul asserts that one of the ways God imparts this encouragement is through the scriptures. Barrett provides a paraphrase of this verse – suggesting that in challenging situations, believers find hope by enduring and looking to God. The scriptures, having foretold such situations, serve as a source of encouragement, guiding believers to navigate their challenges with hope. Further, in Romans 15, 5-6,
Paul addresses the evident tensions within the Roman Christian communities. He prays for divine intervention, asking God to grant the believers the same mindset that Christ Jesus had. The literal translation of Paul's words suggests a desire for the community to think the same thing. However, Paul's intention isn't for unanimous agreement on every issue. He recognises that differences in opinion will persist, as indicated in Romans 14 2, 8. Instead, he underlines the importance of maintaining unity in the spirit, even when disagreements arise. This unity should mirror the attitude of Jesus Christ, who did not live to please himself. Paul's aspiration is for the believers to prioritise the well-being of others over their own desires. This might mean making compromises, especially in the context of shared meals, to foster community harmony. Besides, Paul expresses his aspiration for the Roman believers to unify and worship God harmoniously. Paul calls upon God to assist the Romans in achieving this unity, underscoring the importance of possessing one mind and one voice to glorify God. The term signifying with one mind is unique within Paul's writings and appears predominantly in Acts, usually conveying the notion of unanimous agreement. Paul's intention is for the Romans to achieve a consensus in their journey with Christ, emphasising mutual pleasure rather than self-satisfaction. Recognising the challenges that lie ahead, Paul acknowledges the differing perspectives among the Romans regarding what is deemed acceptable to consume during communal gatherings. Thus, Paul's prayer is for God's intervention to harmonise their beliefs, particularly focusing on mutual respect between the strong and the weak. This unity would enable them to collectively and wholeheartedly glorify God. Last but not least, Paul offers a distinctive title for God, the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Cruz observes that this designation is somewhat unique to Paul's writings, given its presence in various other letters such as 2 Corinthians, Ephesians and Colossians. This terminology signifies a shift from the Old Testament, where God was predominantly referred to as the God of patriarchs like Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. Such references can be found in Genesis, Exodus and even in the words of Jesus in the Gospels, as well as in the Acts of the Apostles. Post the advent of Christ, there seems to be an evolution in the understanding and reference to God, leaning towards recognising him as the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. This change not only highlights the importance and centrality of Jesus in the Christian narrative, but also underscores a deeper and more intimate relationship between God the Father and Jesus Christ the Son. In conclusion, in Romans 15, Paul advocates for the strong in faith to bear with the weak, accentuating Christ's selflessness as an exemplary model. He urges believers to prioritise others' well-being, fostering unity and promoting spiritual growth within the community. In this chapter, Paul identifies himself with the strong, suggesting that their responsibility is to aid rather than merely tolerate the weak, an ideology that contrasts with the contemporary Greco-Roman society where the weak were expected to conform to the strong. Additionally, Paul extensively discusses dietary practices, urging the strong to consider the weak when partaking in meals, demonstrating a countercultural perspective that values mutual respect over personal freedom. Also, he affirms the significance of considering neighbours' welfare, especially those with weaker faith, to prevent being stumbling blocks in their spiritual journey. Moreover, he underscores Christ's exemplariness, citing scriptures to portray his dedication and sacrifices, showcasing the essence of Christ's selfless love captured in various Pauline writings. Furthermore, Paul integrates quotations from the Old Testament, illustrating the alignment between Christ's experiences and those depicted in the Psalms, highlighting the enduring relevance of scriptures for instruction and spiritual nourishment. He perceives scriptures as a tool to foster endurance and hope, aiding believers to navigate through challenges with a spirit of resilience and optimism. In addition, Paul addresses the existing tensions within the Roman Christian community, praying for unity and mutual understanding amongst believers, mimicking Christ's spirit of selflessness and community harmony. He beseeches God to facilitate a consensus among the Romans, 
enhancing mutual respect and collective glorification of God, asserting the evolving recognition of God post-Christ's advent as not only a patriarchal figure, but also the God and Father of Jesus, signifying a deepened and intimate relationship between God the Father and Jesus Christ. This portrayal marks a transformative shift in understanding God in the Christian narrative, highlighting the central role of Jesus.